Let's receive right now our fresh daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you love us so much. And Father, we just enter into your gates with thanksgiving in our heart and into your courts with praise, thanking you, praising you for you being our Father and you choosing us to be your children. Father, we believe we receive right now our fresh manna from heaven, the living word of God that is alive and powerful. And Father, right now, I thank you that you put your thoughts into my mind, your words into my mouth. And Father, that I speak as the oracles of the living God, that you give me commandment what I should speak and what I should say. And this word goes forth in power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit and accomplishes what it is sent to do in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for every person that you've drawn to hear and receive the truth. And Father, I thank you that you give each one a focused, attentive ear and a receptive heart in Jesus' name. And now confess with me by faith the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. Jesus is Lord of all. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now let's confess our reception of the Word of God. You for yourself mix faith with this confession so that you actually uh, hear and receive this word. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you open my ears to hear as the learned. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, that as I hear this word, I grow up in you. This word grows up in me richly in all things and it multiplies and prevails in me in Jesus name I thank you father this word becomes flesh in me and father I thank you that with your help I am a doer of the word and not a hearer only in Jesus name the Holy Spirit's been ministering to us on who we are in Christ and what we have in him and yesterday he began ministering to us and imparting to us the truth that we have the peace of God. In John 14, Jesus said this, My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. And we looked at the scriptures that tell us that we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's just look at a couple of those again. Let's go to uh, Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So just reiterating what the Holy Spirit ministered to us yesterday is we have peace with God only one way and that's through our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not by our good works. It's not by doing good deeds. It's only through our Lord Jesus Christ that we have peace with God. So this is an everlasting truth. So that you know right now you have peace with God. An hour from now you have peace with God. Tomorrow you have peace with God. Every day you have peace with God because Jesus established that. The Father established that through prophecies because this is in the heart of God for you, for all of mankind. So it wasn't that we were going after God. He said, no man's 
sought after him. But it's that God reached out and chose us. He said in a prophecy, I will call a nation that I know not, and nations that knew not me will run unto me because of the Lord thy God. And then in Colossians chapter 1, verse 20, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. So this is what he has made you, holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. And we learn that reconcile means to uh, restore fellowship or friendship with. So God has restored the friendship with us. That was his heart's desire for one reason. And what was that reason? What does the word say? The word says that in Genesis 12, he blessed Abram and said, And in you shall all nations of the earth be blessed. In another place, he said, And in you, in your seed, shall all families of the earth be blessed. Then Galatians 3 tells us that the gospel was preached unto Abram, saying, In thee shall all, or in your seed, shall all nations of the earth be blessed. So this is the will of God for every one of us. So we're going to look at now promises that God has given us for peace. And I just picked out a few. There are many, but I picked out a few because, you know, all the promises of God in him are yes and in him so be it. So in Psalms 59 verse 11, the Lord will give strength unto his people the Lord will bless his people with peace. This is a blessing from the Lord. So I'm sure that probably all of you at some time with the busyness of life has said, I just want peace. Well, here it is. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. And that is, again, that's the word shalom. And let me read you what the Hebrew says. Shalom is safe, well, happy, welfare, health, prosperity, and well, holy, or totally. So God will bless his people with health, prosperity, happiness, safety, welfare, and you know, to be happy means that all of your circumstances are according to the Word of God, according to God's blessing in your life, that everything is going perfect, everything is going right. That's what's in the heart of God for you. In Psalms chapter 4, verse 8, he said, and this is a great scripture for you to use to go to sleep by. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me to dwell in safety. I speak that over myself, and I speak the safety over my children. You, Lord, only make us to dwell in safety. Our trust is not in anything else except the Lord making us to dwell in safety. And he causes me to lay down in peace and sleep. And this one I love. 
in Psalms 147, 14. Well, I think I love them all. But here's a great one for family. He makes peace in your borders. If you have children that are at odds with each other or uh, any kind of strife going on, just start speaking this. He makes peace in your borders and feeds you with the finest of the wheat. Then let's jump over to Proverbs 3, 2. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you. Length of days, long life, and peace. So many times I've used the length of days when I needed extra time. Father, I thank you for length of days that you multiply my time and give me length of days. And when I was having this house and the cottage renovated, the workers that were here, they would say, you know, it just seems like time stands still here. And they would just get so much done and it, the time would just, just kind of multiply. And then in Proverbs 3, verse 13, Happy is the man that finds wisdom, and the man that gets understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more valuable or precious than rubies, and all the things that you can desire are not to be compared to her. And in another place, he says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all you're getting, get understanding. But listen to this. He says, length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all of her paths are peace. And I'll speak that, that all of my paths are peace. Because Christ has made unto me wisdom and understanding. Well, Christ has made unto you wisdom and understanding. And when you walk in the wisdom of God, then all of your paths are peace. I love in um, James chapter 3 where he says, The wisdom that's from above is first pure, listen to this, peaceable, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. So the wisdom of God is pure and it is peaceable and it has mercy and good fruits to it. So those are just a few of the promises that have been given to you for peace. Go to the one that says he makes peace in my borders. And, you know, you can use that on husband and wife. You can use that on uh, your immediate family. You can use it on extended family, that he makes peace in our borders. If you're a pastor of a church, then you can speak that. He makes peace in my borders. In other words, that causes everybody to be at peace with you and with each other. And next, we're going to look at uh, prophecies, and we'll just look at a couple of those today and then pick up on this tomorrow. This one I gave you yesterday, but we're gonna look at it again because this is prophesying of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter nine, verse six and seven, for unto us a child is born, unto us, a son is given and we know his name is Jesus and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace so I call Jesus my prince of peace I call him wonderful to me and my family. I call him counselor. I call him the mighty God, my mighty God, not just anybody's mighty God. Personalize it, make him your mighty God, 
my everlasting Father, my Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So you can say, in my life, of the increase of his government and his peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And then the next prophecy has to do with the righteousness of God that he has given to us. It's Isaiah 32, 17. And the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. So the work of God's righteousness in you and in your family is peace. It's not uh, turmoil. It's not strife. It's not anger. The work of righteousness is peace. And that's why it's so important that you establish and that you speak that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's who you are. And the effect of righteousness in us and in our families is quietness and assurance forever. I like that word quietness. And even the word assurance. So peace and quietness and assurance in your home. Isn't that a good word? And then the one next to that, right, right under that is verse 18, Isaiah 12, 18. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. So if you're believing God for a house, then believe God to be in a peaceful neighborhood. That was actually one of the things that we put on our list when we were believing God for our first house, that it would be in a quiet and peaceful neighborhood. And it was. It was a great, great neighborhood. And we ended up being the noisiest ones in that neighborhood because we gave our boys motorcycles and they would ride those motorcycles throughout the neighborhood. So my people, you are God's people, shall dwell in a peaceable habitation. That has to do with your home. God wants your home to be filled with his peace at all times. And so you can take this as a promise, as a prophecy, and say, Father, I thank you that I am your people and I dwell in a peaceable habitation. My family is full of your peace and peace with each other. The children at peace with the parents, the parents at peace with the children, the children at peace with each other, the husband and wife being at peace with each other. So this is a powerful promise that you shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. Doesn't that sound like Psalms 23, that he leads us beside the still waters? He makes us to lie down in green pastures. So take that word, and if you're believing God for a new house, if you're believing God for your first house, take that. That is a great scripture for believing God for a house, that not only you get the house, but in the house, it is a peaceful habitation. You know, the home should be a place of refuge and haven for your family, that when they come in, they can feel that um, and sense the peace of God that is in there. And it's God's peace. 
It's not you creating the peace. It's you receiving what his promise said, that it is a peaceable habitation. I remember when one of my granddaughters and her husband bought their house, Zoe, about um, two or three years ago now. And I was a little concerned about the house. And so as I was praying, the Lord gave me the scripture. He blesses the habitation of the just. So God gives you promises for you to mix faith with so that he can come in and perform that word for you. So he said here, let's say it again, that my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation. Let's just make that as a confession. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that I and my family dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in a quiet resting place. And so, like I said, if you're believing God for a house or a new house, put that on your list. Make a list of everything that you desire in your house and in this that it is in a quiet place it is in a quiet peaceful safe neighborhood and god will honor that and he will direct your paths to a peaceful quiet na safe safe say the word safe dwelling place praise god so these are some promises to take and to just put in your mouth and start confessing. And these are uh, also prophecies. So, well, wait a minute. Have we got to the prophecies yet? Yes, these are prophecies. So we are going to see how those prophecies were fulfilled. But these are also promises for you to mix faith with. Because all the promises of God are yes and so be it. And how do we receive them? He says that we are to fear lest any promise being left us of entering into his rest, we come short of it. And he said that we're not to be slothful, but followers of them who through faith and consistency or steadfastness inherit the promises. So we inherit the promises through faith and through our confession of faith. God's peace is worth so much for your life to be not in turmoil, but in peace. And I'll give you a little tip. When any time that I'm um, in a place that has a TV on, I, I was in a auto place not too long ago having my uh, truck worked on. And while I was there, the TV was on. And I just thought, how do families, how can they live in peace when they've got constant strife going on in these programs? I encourage you that you not allow the things of the world into your home through the voice of the world, through TV, through uh, YouTube, through... through um, what through internet that you only allow anything that is peace into your home and I don't know if you can find that on the world's programs or not but it's better to just do away with it and then to have the strife and you know the programs I was listening to in that place I finally asked them I said would it be okay with you if we turn that off and because children were talking back to parents. That is a no-no. Children should not be speaking uh, against the parents and talking back to them with an attitude. Now, it's okay to ask a question in respect, but not to just brashly talk back to an adult. No, the word says to honor your father and your mother and to honor those that are in authority over you so children need to be trained according to the word of god and not allow the world to train them so that's one way that you'll have peace in your home 
is if you will cut that stuff off and just um, allow them the peace and the haven of being in a peaceful environment. And that's up to the parents to choose that for them. Remember, the children are subject to the parents, not the parents subject to the children. So it's up to you to make those choices for your children that your home is going to be uh, a haven, a rest, a refuge for your family. So you have to guard what goes into your home, what goes into your children's ears and before their eyes. I remember when uh, my children were growing up, on Saturday the big thing was cartoons. And I got to noticing after they'd watched two or three cartoons, they got to fighting with each other. They'd be in strife with each other. So we just did away with it. We just said, we're not, we're not doing this. And we found other activities for them to do where they could enjoy each other. Well, that was a little extra tip. But it is God's will for you to live in a peaceable habitation, but it's your choice as to bringing peace into your home. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for his word. Thank God for the instruction of his word. Thank God for his peace in Jesus' name.